Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today's video is a two-part video. So the first part of this video is about 17 minutes long and it's gonna go over uh, the AW1033 awning style window. It's gonna show you how the whole window installs into the van. Um, I talked a little bit about uh, how it interacts with the installation of your van, if you have a bump out, uh, all that stuff kind of concerning how to fit the window into the van. Uh, the full install, however, is going to be in a separate video. Um, the card right here is going to link you to that video, and that'll show the, the whole process start to finish. Second part of this video is creating the cardboard template. So I go through the whole process of creating a very precise cardboard template that you can use to make installing this AW1033 awning style window extremely easy. Straightforward, you can copy it from one side, move it to the next, and uh, I'll show you that in the second part. So hope you guys enjoy this video and we're gonna go ahead and get into the next clip. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we are starting part three of the Adventure Wagon interior conversion kit. Now we're installing windows, so that's not part of the Adventure Wagon interior conversion kit itself, but what I've decided to do is now is the time to put these windows in before we get to the sound deading material the insulation, and the upholstered panels that'll complete our kit. Uh, so I'm assuming if you're doing the, this Adventure Wagon install, um, you either put your windows in or you've started the install of the Adventure Wagon kit and you wanna find a place, a good place to uh, begin to put your windows in. I think this is the best, best place to do it. Um, so you can do it before you even start or I'm doing it right now. The reason I'm delayed and didn't do it at the very beginning of this uh, van conversion is these have been on back order since September. I ordered these probably middle of September and they came in the middle of January. <laughs> so I've been waiting, I've been waiting on these windows forever. And it's not just these windows. I also ordered two passenger uh, sliding T-vent windows from CRL and I also ordered two driver side windows from CRL. Uh, so those were also on back order. So the four of those in total plus six of these windows. Uh, so yeah, industry right now, lead times, logistics, all that stuff. Uh, it's pretty wild. So you gotta be really patient if you're working on a van build right now. The good news is I have enough windows for this van and I have enough windows for my second van conversion that's over there. All right, let's talk about these windows a little bit. Um, I really like these windows, and the reason I like them is because uh, they are the awning style. They're not the half bunk sliders that a lot of people like to go with. Um, those are more readily available. However, the environments which uh, I want my clients, customers to be able to go to, uh, maybe a little bit harsher, stormy weather, snow, that sort of thing. And so camping in my van with the awning that I have and the tarp and stuff like that, you know, you need a lot of protection from uh, storms where, where if it's snow or rain, when it blows in sideways against your van, if you don't have an awning style window or T-vent windows, for example, um, you can't really open up that half slider and not let rain into your van or like mist, stuff like that. Um, so the best way that I've decided is to use these awning style windows. So when you open these windows up, they open like this, they twist open. I uh, see the only con about these windows is they do not open a lot, but you gotta understand it's really about surface area. And right here you have a ton of surface, a ton of a large opening where a lot of air can come into your van. So don't think that you're not gonna get a lot of ventilation with this window. You're gonna get a lot, because this, this gap right here is essentially, um, I mean, I'm not gonna calculate the uh, square inches of this, but you've got, you've got a, lot of, a lot of opening right there. Because, the benefit of this window is that you are shielded from, you know, rain and snow coming in. 
big rainstorm at night and you want to open the windows, keep the van ventilated, it's just going to roll right off. And it also comes with the integrated screen. The screen's nice, it's a metal frame screen and it is Velcroed. I'm going to go ahead and close this. So you just put this on and it's really easy to take on and off. It's Velcroed as you guys can see. Fits right over the thing that opens it up and you can just take it off. Now I haven't, I'm not twisting this all the way because it does close really tightly, but you can just peel this right off and then that way you're back to an open window. So yeah, we're going with the AW 1033 windows. Um, I also really, really like the tent. The tent is extremely dark on here. Very nice dark tent. And uh, last thing we'll show is the gasket. So it's got a nice foam gasket here. Um, some other windows use the, uh, almost like a window adhesive to glue them in. I'm open to that in the future about using those. Um, however, if you, uh, when we cut out our template today, if we keep a really tight edge here, we'll be able to get as much of this gasket sealing as possible. Um, that's one reason why you don't want to cut your hole out too big. If you cut your hole out too big, that's you're using uh, a lesser amount of gasket to seal out the water. Uh, another point to mention is these windows are not curved, they are flat. So the transit, the side of this transit is, is slightly curved. So there will be a slight, uh, the sheet metal is gonna contact 100% here. And then right here, it'll contact on the inside but this outer rim I will just be lightly touching. It's still gonna seal, but when you're installing these, just make a mental note that this is what you're going to end up with later. We're gonna install these. We're gonna see how true that is. Uh, this is the first time I'm installing the AW1033 windows into a van. So we're gonna see uh, if what other YouTubers have experienced and DIYers have experienced is kind of true for us. I'm thinking that instead of going right up here to the edge, we're actually going to come down a little bit and maybe we'll interact with a little bit more of a vertical flat surface. So take that for what it's worth. Um, we're going to do this whole thing start to finish, so we'll, you'll get to see all of it. Another uh, concern that some people had was the or a problem that they ran into was that the bag of screws that come with this, uh, they've, they've had issues being able to uh, really clamp down on this outer ring. Um, okay, we're gonna, this is not part of the kit. I'm gonna talk about this in just a second. This is a just a exterior frame or interior frame. Okay, so this is your clamping ring that comes with the window. If we put it on here, it stays nice and flush, okay? However, when uh, some YouTubers online, DIYers, they've had an issue with this ring clamping down all the way and making a good seal because these screws are, or they're saying that they're bottoming out on this little lip. And I would agree with that. I'm anticipating that being the same uh, thing that's gonna happen to us when we install these today. There's this channel right here. I'm gonna just hand screw one in. And that way you guys can, can see that. So right there's that screw. Um, <laughs> there's, there's nothing, I measured it with the calipers. There's like two and a half millimeters of depth to tighten this in. Uh, and some people, I just uh, kind of, I understand why they're, they're doing it manufacturing wise because they can just make this and this and then you kind of deal with it when you get the uh, window. However, for people who have not 
installed things or aren't too handy, um, it can be a little bit of a challenge to get this to really clamp down and have good clamping force to keep the water out, keep it sealed. Um, it also just makes the install frustrating. So what I'm gonna try to do and help you guys out with today is I've got a plan. Um, we're slightly snowed in at the moment. There's a big winter storm that came through. So um, it's a bunch of snow, uh, snow right outside the shop. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to go to Lowe's and pick up these uh, socket head cap screws. But my solution to this is to get M4 socket head cap screws and drill a pilot hole and then tap it with an M4 thread. thread. And I'm doing that because you can, uh, you need this, these should have been designed in a way where you can just screw a screw in here because this is not really, I mean, this is a screw, but it's more of like a sheet metal screw. Um, and you need a little bit of finer threads to get that uh, nice compression around this whole entire gasket. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, in today's video, we're probably just gonna get the template cut out and one of the windows cut out. In the following videos, we'll go into, uh, I mean, for you guys, this is all being one video. But the next segment of this, I'll go in and have, I'll have the bolts and everything ready. But today I just wanted to go ahead and get this video started to show you what we're installing. So it's the AW1033 window. Um, this is what comes with it. And we got our screen. So that is, uh, that's the whole thing right there. We're gonna do one behind the slider door and then two on the driver's side. Now we're doing the Adventure Wagon interior conversion kit. And there's a company I'm gonna pull their box right over here. So we're using this company. It's called Flatline Fan Co. And we're using them for the uh, roof system, uh, the side ladder, roof rack, and they make a product right here. It's, a, it's designed for this uh, awning style window, the AW1033. And it's this inner um, trim ring. So this trim ring is going to go inside the van. And so if you guys can imagine, this is the, obviously this is the outside. This trim ring will get put around this window. And then what this does is, so if you guys can see this on the overhead, you're going to have the window, the sheet metal of your van, this trim ring that compresses it to make the seal, and then you're gonna have this uh, outer, uh, this inner trim ring for your van. And what this is doing is, this is making up for the insulation uh, thickness, as well as the Adventure Wagon interior panels. So once you have the insulation put in and that's pressed down and then you have your uh, interior panels, um, you got quite a bit of thickness that you need to be able to adjust for. So they make this kit uh, and it's designed to work with the Adventure Wagon interior kit. And you put this in first once you've put your window in and then this trim ring, uh, so this will actually be the whole, this will be the, what you cut out of your interior panel from Adventure Wagon. You'll, you'll cut out this square profile. Then once you've cut that out, this ring slips in side of it. It's got four bolts here, so you can adjust how thick your uh, insulation is. So I'll show that above. See if I can do that. So you guys can see, you can adjust how wide or narrow it is. And then when you get finished, you put your window in, the ring, and when you're finished with your interior kit, you put your panel in. What this is gonna do is this is gonna finish out your kit 
and make a nice clean uh, outer frame, uh, which is functional and it looks really good too. And you have three bolts up here and three bolts up here and these will, uh, you'll screw directly into your adventure wagon panel and I've got one over here. So this is one of the, this right here is one of the interior bump outs. And so the thickness that you are making up for is the thickness of this plastic. So you got the plastic, this, this little, little eighth inch insulation, you got your material, and then you'll have your, uh, you'll have one layer of insulation here. So if you can imagine um, this being this panel, you can see you got, you know, quite a bit of space that you need to make up for. And that's what this is going to do. Um, so inside the van, we've already marked out where we're going to, uh, to cut this. We've, we've got close to an idea of exactly what we're going to do, but that's the whole point of the video today is to have you guys just join along with me in putting this together. And so the first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to move on to actually cutting out our template. So that's probably the most important part. And that's why I've set up this whole entire rig here is so that you guys can uh, learn from all the videos that I've watched and I've got a playlist that I'll link and it's about six YouTube videos from people all over the US and it's how they installed it. Each one has a different problem that they ran into and so I'm probably pretty much taking those six or ten videos that I watched and kind of rolling it into this video. So anything that I saw really worked for them to help them out, I'm putting it in this video. Um, but what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean off this table, move this insulation, and then we'll have this laid out. Uh, make sure that you have your CRL box with you because that is what we're gonna use to create our template. Um, we're gonna need a fine tipped permanent marker. Um, we're gonna need a uh, razor blade to cut it out with a brand new, nice clean, super sharp blade. And then I'll go ahead and start creating my template. So let's get this cleaned off and then we will start um, making our template. All right, we're back. Got our CRL box, got our permanent marker and razor, razor blade. And we're gonna go ahead and just uh, kind of disassemble the box. And we're going to cut down one side, cut down the other side. Then what I'm gonna do is uh, flip this over so we got a nice, uh, uh, <laughs> give you guys a headache on that video. Uh, we're gonna put this down here and uh, let me just double check on our framing, make sure you guys can actually see what's going on, perfect. Nice. As you guys can already tell, my stuff is very long form, highly detailed. So feel free to fast forward on any of this, you know, scrub through it to get to a point where you want to uh, just kind of move on from where I'm at. You might have already got the cardboard cut out, know how to do all of this. That's completely cool. So, I mean, this, this video is ultra detailed for somebody who really has no idea um, where to start. Uh, and that way it can benefit everyone. So. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, take off this frame. We don't need that. I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to use this. And 
there was a, there's a couple videos that I saw and what the comments from those videos um, of people that are installing this is, this tends to flex and it really doesn't give you an accurate uh, representation of where the cutout needs to be. Uh, there was somebody on YouTube that also made a template for this. Uh, they took pieces of wood. Uh, this is a bad example, but they took pieces of wood and they actually made an exterior frame to hold this to where it didn't flex so they could get a nice accurate read on this inside. Because what people are doing is they are tracing this inside ring uh, for the obvious reason of, well, that's what fits around this and that should be my rate, my dimensions for what I should trace. Here's the problem. You get a lot of up and down movement and you have a lot of side to side movement. Um, you have almost a quarter of an inch left to right and I say you got about uh, definitely over an eighth up to down, uh, up and down. That's not good. You, you want a better tolerance than that for your cutting your hole out. Because remember, the tighter you get your hole, the tighter you get that uh, template and dimensions, number one, you get a little bit of wiggle room to where if you, uh, if you cut it out too much and remove it, move that material, you're, that's it. That's, uh, your SOL, you, you can't add <laughs> more sheet metal back. So uh, Aaron on the side of caution is gonna help you out, but also uh, you want as much of this gasket to touch the sheet metal of the van as possible. The more this gasket that's touching, the better seal that you're gonna get. And also uh, it's gonna you know, wobble less because it's, it's getting as much bite onto the side of the van. So everything helps out it's as tight as you can get this. So what I'm gonna do, and we're gonna see if it's gonna work out because I haven't seen anybody do it, but just in my mind is what I think is gonna work. Um, so make sure you take everything off. And what we're gonna do, uh, one annoying part is this knob, but I'm trying to use the edge of the table to knock that off. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is I need to just need to cut some more of this uh, cardboard off here. And I'm actually going to do a straight cut so I can use this. Um, <laughs> Let me tell you what I'm doing. So this outer This outer rim right here, which is what is gonna go through our hole, that needs to be what is referenced. So from here, from here to here, that is needs to be our minimum width. And then from here to here, our min, okay, minimum height. And then from here to here, minimum width. Uh, we can go ahead and I can already tell you how ridiculous different that is so right here if you guys see we got 10 and one two three let's see one two three four five six ten and three eighths this just shy of ten and three eighths okay so let's get this piece and we'll give it a fighting chance. We'll measure it here so it's not flexing. Okay. So we went from 10 and 3 eighths to 10. One, two, three, four, five eighths. Man, that's crazy. Like 11 sixteenths, 10, 11 sixteenths, almost 10 and three quarters, almost 10 and three quarters. 
So huge difference, huge difference. You don't want that big of a difference when you're cutting these windows out. So gonna make sure that we get these uh, just as tight as possible. So I'm gonna start out with, watch my time on the camera here. I'm gonna start off by just getting a straight edge for our cardboard. So we're just gonna go down here and get a straight line. I'm using a drywall, drywall square for that. Just had a little bit left over. Okay, so now we got our straight edge here. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do our measurement right here. And we got this little plastic plastic tab here and a plastic tab here. There's nothing here. There is a little spot weld with some slag on it right here. Um, we'll take care of that later. We can always do like a little, just grind a little notch out so that'll pop in. So we got 10 and a half inches right there, 10 and a half. All right, right where that plastic is, which is our, uh, so we're gonna do 10 and a half. And I know I told you the other dimension earlier, but that did not include this little plastic tab right here. So we need, we need to take care of that. We're gonna go 10 and a half. Put my mark slightly above the line. That way, when I go here, I'm able to uh, to make that work. And what I'm actually going to do is move this stuff so I don't scratch it to pieces. But I'm going to take my drywall square. I'm actually going to square off this piece of cardboard. Okay, and that way we got a nice right angle. We can start moving on from that. So I'm gonna leave this till last. I'm gonna go ahead and square this edge off where we, where we need it uh, width-wise. So let's bring this on here. And be careful, this is really abrasive, so don't, don't try not to slide this window uh, all over this. So I'm, trying to just keep it to where I just lay it straight down. Okay, and then we got 32. A little less than 32. Let's make sure there's no bumps. Okay, we got 32. And 32 and a half. And 
thing. I go 32 and a half. And this may look like overkill, but um, I was an engineer for a couple years and I worked for a textile company and we had to uh, keep these machines running and there was no sp spare parts available because these machines were designed in the uh, 50s and 60s. So if you needed, if a part broke, you had to l literally recreate the part. So redesign it or that sort of thing. And so what I picked up is uh, just <laughs> having to, just having to be ultra precise because you know, you had bearing clearances and stuff like that and uh, slip fits, interference fits. And for those of you that don't know what that means, uh, like for a shaft to fit into a hole, there's a certain type of clearance, but you had to be ultra precise or it just wouldn't work at all. This is not the case. Uh, we're talking about eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, which is huge compared to bearing tolerances and stuff like that. Um, but I know that if I'm as precise as I could possibly be, it's just gonna, it's gonna fit perfect the first time and I don't have to get all this anxiety going. I can just I just know that it'll be right when I go to do it. Um, so we got our measurement here. We got 32 and a half right there. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna come in an eighth of an inch because um, that was where I was, that was right where I was at and I'm gonna make sure that I cut on the outside of my marker. So, we got 32, we're gonna do 32 and a half exactly for the cardboard, and then I'm gonna come in, my marker will be an eighth of an inch in so that when we cut it out on the outside, it'll be a perfect replica of our, our window. Okay, so we got 32 and a half. We got 32 and a half. I'm gonna push down so nothing moves. We're gonna go ahead and make our mark. Okay. Just triple check. Top is good. Bottom is off somehow. Actually, we're good. We're just gonna, yeah, make sure we do the outside of that. Yeah, we'll be perfect. We're good there. So now, since this is our right angle, our true right angle, we can just come back over here and get this matched up. It's the way you match up uh, the square. You don't want to like, don't want like that. You want to make sure it's nice and tight. Slide down. And this was our 10 and a half inch measurement. Just a little off over here. Okay, we're good here.
Uh, since this is the first window of the AW1033 series that I've installed, uh, I'm assuming that manufacturing wise, they may be off about a 16th of an inch or eighth of an inch, possibly. Um, they could they could wow me and uh, it could be much more accurate than that, but I'm not sure. Okay, 10 and a half, good. So we're gonna go ahead and leave this where it's at. We're gonna bear down and we are going to go ahead and make our cut. Same thing over here. <laughs> this window out of the way. I do have an extra one of those. I bought an extra one just in case something happened in the shop, one broke. Because um, I actually only need five, I don't need six. And to tell you guys that I'm human, I'm not a robot, I did kind of slightly cut into the wrong side of my line. <laughs> so I just gotta be careful. There it is. So when I'm tracing, you guys will see right there that this part is off. I'm gonna put a piece of tape right there. Mm -hmm. Masking tape is what I need. And we can check that. We got 10 and a half, we've got 10 and a half, we've got 10 and a half, okay. So if you goof and cut your piece of cardboard, instead of making, even doing the whole entire thing, just put a little piece of tape right there. Okay, so we got this started. So let's go back and look at our window. Um, and let, All right, you guys are gonna love this. <laughs> when I was cutting this to get my right angles, uh, I forgot to measure this width side, so. This is not wide enough. It's okay. This is, the, this is the place you wanna mess up. You don't wanna mess up later. So, I didn't realize this box was that narrow. I thought I could just go for it and not need that extra width, but I was wrong. Yeah, so we have to use every bit of that box.
back in the game. Okay, one thing I will do, since we made that little goof on this one, is I'm gonna use this one to practice my radius on, and then I will, uh, I'll be back to do the other part. All right, we're gonna let Nova bark for a minute while we explain how important cutting the radius out correctly is. So a lot of the problems that come with installing this window are in this radius that I'm cutting right here. So if you take the outer ring, the, the compression ring that holds the window into the its spot, if you trace that, it's just too big of a radius and that allows not enough sealing area to happen between uh, the four corners. And that is actually what causes the leaks in this window. Um, so you want to make sure when you are tracing out that radius that you are tracing the tighter radius, uh, not the wider radius. Okay, I got the camera restarted. So now we can take our template that we haven't cut the edges off yet. Let's put it on here. It's looking amazing. These, widths, these sides are perfect. Don't want to mess with this. These top and bottom are perfect. Let's not mess with that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tape down these sides. All right, so this next part is very important as well. Tape down the sides so you don't have any movement between the top and bottom that you got very accurate. This next part is we're going to precisely trim the corners and we're going to cut it while it's actually taped to the frame. This way we can use the frame as a guide. Uh, don't worry about scratching it. It's aluminum and this part uh, will not show because it'll be hidden by the trim ring. Um, but make sure you're, we are taking the razor, the sharpest one you have, and we're just kind of uh, shaving off that corner just as precisely as possible. And that way you're only cutting out the hole in which the window is gonna go through and nothing more. It's gonna give you the best seal possible. And once you're done with that, uh, you're pretty much finished with the template and you can go ahead and trace it out on the van and start cutting out the hole. This is really good. We got this uh, taken care of. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put it on the van and we will start to begin uh, doing our tracing out and our preparation to cut our first hole out in the van. <laughs> 